Welcome to this episode of Translating Technobabble. My name is Gary Schultz. I'm the Vice President of Marketing and Sales. And today I'm here with Brian Love. Uh, Brian Love is one of our uh, principal enterprise architects. Mm -hmm. That's and, correct. And uh, a Google developer expert. That's right. In web technologies, Angular technology. That's right. Um, something we've been wanting to talk about for a while is uh, a much anticipated Angular 9 release. That's right. Um, I think, you know, if I think about an executive manager listening, we really want to come up with the, the kinds of, have the conversation with the lens of what is the impact to my team? Mm -hmm. How disruptive is this going to be? Is this really worth it? What are the benefits? And so I think um, to start things off, I'd like to just ask, um, what is the big deal about Angular 9? That's a really good question, Gary. So uh, Angular 9 is uh, a release after Angular 8, obviously, but Angular 9 is a dramatic shift in how Angular actually works under the hood. So about two years ago, the Google team kind of had this foreknowledge of people using more mobile devices to access the internet. And they wanted to create a rendering engine, so that's what kind of drives Angular underneath the hood, that was more performant. And so in order to do that, they kind of thought about how can we create a new rendering engine for Angular that is backwards compatible, so you can swap it out with the old one, and you're going to get increased performance in your applications. And so this has been something that the Angular team has been working on for literally two years. Uh, so Angular 8 had a preview of this kind of new feature, and then Angular 9 actually ships with this uh, in production. So you'll be able to get started using this new technology that Google has been working and innovating on for the last two years just by updating to Angular 9. So um, what was, you know, if, if, I, if I think about um, this two-year kind of foresight, what were, the, what were the big picture goals? What, what did they have in mind? Yeah, so they had kind of four main goals when they set out to create this new uh, compiler and rendering engine. And so the first goal was smaller. And so they wanted to make it so that your applications are smaller. And what that means is when you actually create an Angular application, at the end, you're shipping JavaScript to a browser, right? And if we can make those files smaller, then that means that our users are going to have a better experience. Things are going to start faster. It's going to run better. Smaller is good, right? And so they did some actual testing of Angular applications. And for large enterprise applications, they saw up to a 40% reduction in bundle size. So this is a really big win for you and your organization simply by updating from Angular 8 to Angular 9. Wow. Yeah, the second one that they had was uh, faster compilation. So as part of the process as an Angular developer, you have to actually compile your code from what you write down into what's shipped right to the browser. Mm -hmm. And so the compiler previously, while it was fast, they thought, what if we could make this even faster? So one of the examples that I like to use is you might have a really large application, and it might take, I don't know, maybe a minute or so to actually run a full mm -hmm. compile, right? Uh, and to do that, a developer might get kind of distracted. You know, maybe you end up over on Twitter mm -hmm. or something, mm -hmm. you know? And so uh, what if we can make it so fast that it's almost instantly available? So when you go from uh, making changes in your code base, uh, it goes and it's displayed and rendered in, in the page just fast. Mm -hmm. uh, so that was kind of their second main uh, goal that they wanted to have was faster compilation. Got it. Uh, the third one that they wanted to do was they wanted to have a simpler API. And let me kind of explain this real quickly. This isn't going to change the API surface layer that developers use for Angular, but this changes the API kind of underneath the hood. And the thing that I'm really excited about this is that we're going to see some really great innovation in the Angular ecosystem as a result of this. Mm -hmm. So if I want to actually get in and work with the, the nuts and bolts of Angular, and I'm, I, there's a particular thing I need to optimize, or maybe I want to build a new product or a new open source uh, kind of uh, thing that people can use and bring into their uh, code base, mm -hmm. that API now to actually work with Angular under the hood is much, much simpler. And so before, if you tried to extend the platform or build on top of the platform in innovative ways, it was really challenging. Even in Angular 8. Even in Angular 8. So with this new kind of uh, base layer that they've done with Angular 9, mm -hmm. we're, I think we're going to see some really great innovation by 
really leading you know companies and things and so what this means for me and my organization mm -hmm. is rather than having to perhaps do some of this innovation in-house there's going to be out, people out there in the ecosystem creating amazing new products and stuff that I can then purchase Consume, yeah. or bring into my yep. application and instantly can kind of run with this. Got it. Um, so that was the third thing that they, kind of the third goal. Mm -hmm. And then this last one is also really, really key, and that's backwards compatibility. Mm -hmm. So uh, one of the stories of Angular is we don't want to leave people behind. Right. We want you and your organization to be able to upgrade from seven to eight to nine to ten and into the future and we want to make that easy mm -hmm. right and unlike so, unlike perhaps uh, angular js to angular right and so as we know that was kind of a big lift for some organizations mm -hmm. um and, and we see that every day and that's We're right with organizations every that's, day that's right and some organizations may even be in kind of a hybrid state right uh where they have angular js and angular mixed together mm -hmm. uh and you can do that uh, but eventually, AngularJS uh, long-term support is going to end, and you're going to want to get that into you know a nice, stable, uh, latest release of Angular. Um, and that upgrade path is something that you're going to want to reach out to you know some professionals and get some help on that. Um, Do that every day, right? It's and and some of those are massive. You would never know how big these enterprises are. That's right. How many millions of users are on these applications? To your point. Um, that's not a small lift. That's not a small lift. Two, 200 pages in, in both mobile and, and, and desktop versions, right? Just right. Requires strategy, requires architecture yeah. expertise, yes. requires some And you want to have the right, you have the right people in the room when you start laying out that path. So that way you do it the right find way. Find a partner. Absolutely, find a partner for that. Um, so, but to your point, that was a, that's a heavy lift. Correct. But the focus was really on making this process moving forward? Really seamless. Really seamless. That's right. And so in fact, some of the, there are some breaking changes, they're fairly minor, but Google's gone so far out of their way to ensure backwards compatibility mm -hmm. that they're gonna make those changes for you. They're gonna, when you do the update process, uh, there's gonna be an automated approach that's going to actually make those changes for you in your code base. What do we, so that was the goals. What do we end up getting? What, what, can, we, what can we expect with this release? Yeah, so with this release, you can expect to get uh, performance in, in the client, so especially around mobile performance. You can expect some smaller bundle sizes, and your mileage may vary. Uh, some applications may see up to that 40% reduction. Mm -hmm. Some may see very little reduction in bundle size. It really depends on just how much of the uh, kind of surface layer of the API you're using in your application. Got it. Um, and then you can also expect to see that innovation. I really think we're going to see some innovation in the through ecosystem the API. through that simpler API. Yeah, got it. Usually with these kind of releases, you get um, some cool technology features. That's right. Um, what can you give us a preview of the feature set that we're going to see as well? Just that it's going to help my applications yep. do really cool things. Yep. Set the new standard for consumer behavior and consumer expectations with. Absolutely. The screen. Absolutely. Uh, and, and let me start off with one of the features that is a little dry maybe for the developers, but I think it's really important for engineering managers and leaders to know yes. about this. Um, and so Angular uses a language called TypeScript, and TypeScript does uh, what's called type checking. So it makes sure that, that things line up in your code, right? That what you're expecting something to be matches up with what it really is, mm -hmm. right? And so there was actually a recently a study done uh, by a leading educational institution here uh, in the US that said they took open source projects, right? And so in GitHub, and they analyzed those code bases and they looked at closed issues. And they saw that 15 to 20% of closed issues could have been solved by type checking ahead of time. So people didn't have type checking in place, and those issues could have just been no problem, no bugs would have been actually released into production. So those issues that will, were solved could have just been caught, right? And so this type checking is really important in Angular as developers, but also as 
uh, like getting applications into production, mm -hmm. right? And so with Angular 9, they've gone and they've created a new template type checking system that's going to go deeper into your templates and verify the types between what you have and what is expected. Hmm. And so I think what we're going to see is we're going to see a couple of things. First of all, a reduction in regressions of our application. I think we're going to see time savings in terms of developers knowing what they're working with in their templates and getting some IntelliSense and getting some functionality in their editor to be able to uh, know what the types are and to make sure that their code is correct. And then we're also going to get cost savings because we're not going to have to go out there and spend time fixing bugs right. that we could have just caught right. ahead of time. Very cool. Uh, and so this template type checking is going to be something that it's not a whiz-bang feature, no. right? But this is something that's going to be really important for organizations. Releases. It's going to be more stable applications, and it's going to be a cost savings and, and, cool. and a time uh, reduction for de developers and engineers. Got so, it. Yeah. So uh, our audience is engineering managers, executives. Yes. Um, you're right, that last one was not a whiz-bang feature, but you've got my attention. Yeah, it's really um, important. Anything else in this release that uh, it would really help me as a manager? Yeah, let me talk about two more things that I think are really compelling for uh, managers. Uh, and the first one is going to be around internationalization. And sometimes we shorten that because it's kind of a long word to say. Mm -hmm. So we just call it like I-18N, right? And so if you're developing applications that you're deploying to multiple locales, so multiple languages that you're supporting in your application, in Angular 8 and previous releases, you had to compile and build your application all the way uh, every time you targeted a new locale. So let me just use an example. Let's say I have an application and the base language is English, mm -hmm. and it takes a minute to compile my application, right? To actually mm -hmm. get it built, whether that's in my developer machine or in my continuous integration environment where I'm actually deploying, okay. right? So that's a one minute, and I'm just targeting that in English. Now let's say I want to add four more languages. Whatever that is, let's say I'm going to do like German, Spanish, Portuguese, French, right? In Angular 8 and down, you had to kind of, the cost was one minute to, to compile it in English, and then you had to compile it every, all the way through for each one of those. So that would be a five minute uh, kind of compilation time, right? And you can imagine if you're targeting more, right, it goes up. But the story is much more improved with Angular 9. So now they're doing some really advanced techniques in terms of swapping out those language, like the markers in the code where we're going to swap out with the English for the Spanish mm -hmm. or the German. And so now you only have to compile it once, and then that swap is going to happen like almost instantaneously. So now instead of a five minute compile time, you're down back to a minute and 15 seconds, yep. minute and 20 seconds. Got it, cool. And so that's a time improvement, not just in terms of like rolling out to production, but hopefully you're doing testing and continuous integration in terms of all of the builds that your developers are doing when they're submitting any changes to the code base. So every time they submit a PR or any change, we want to do a full build in all those languages, make sure everything passes, all of our unit tests, our integration tests and our end-to-end -end tests. And so you're going to see that that time that it takes to run those is going to be much shortened. And so again, as a developer, this is just another developer experience improvement where my team is going to be equipped to be faster and be able to move faster. Yeah. And that, that of course, saves, translates saves to your cost op savings. Optimizes my yeah. team's time. That's great. Yeah. Um, you said two. That's right. And so the <laughs> other one I want to talk about is this one's kind of maybe a bit of a whiz-bang kind of feature okay. that, that uh, engineers are going to go, oh, that's cool. Uh, and that's around lazy loading. And so what that means is we can defer the loading of uh, chunks in JavaScript that we're sending down to the browser, to your client, until it's actually needed, right? And so by lazy loading your application, I can get uh, people into my application and working with my application faster. So what does this mean for the actual end user or the consumer in some applications? What, is this, what does this feature mean? That's a really great question. So what this means is, uh, when you sit down to do your job, say this you're building a line of business application and you've got users and your users are employees, when they sit down in the morning and they go to fire up your application, it means that they're only going to get the code that's necessary for them to get started, right? And so we can defer any sort of code or any sort of modules or chunks that are necessary for the entire universe of the application to run until they actually want that particular part of the application. And so, so we, load times are faster. So load times are faster. And so in the industry, we use a term called timed interactivity, or TTI. Okay. And so what this means for your users is a reduced TTI. And so as soon as I get in and I want to get started, 
that interactivity is just there, right? I go, I sit down, I load it up, applications ready to go. Um, and we've been able to do this in Angular 8 and, and previous releases for some time, uh, but with Angular 9, the story is that it's a more modularization, right? So I can really make smaller pieces of my code if I need to and lazy load those in as necessary. And so this enables developers not to just lazy load uh, large chunks, but now I can lazy load if I want really small, fine-grained things. Got so it. I can really make my application uh, highly performant for my users. All of that sounds great. Those aren't, to me, those aren't just some features. I mean, those are, those are significant um, both end user um, experience mm -hmm. updates, big updates. Mm -hmm. um, but if I'm running an organization, running a team, running an application, these things are gonna be big optimization opportunities. Um, so let's say, okay, I like to make, I like to, I like to look at making this upgrade to Angular 9 and get yep. all the benefits like Google do some of the heavy lifting in the background, have some sure. flexible API, maybe take advantage of all the contributions that are coming in. Mm -hmm. um, what are the prerequisites? What, what, what do I, if, I'm, if I wanna make this upgrade, what, what do I need to have in place? And then maybe you could even talk to um, how I'd get started. Okay, yeah, let's do that. Uh, so let's make sure that we're real clear here. The prerequisite is that you have to be on the latest version of Angular 8, so the latest stable version before you go from 8 to 9. And then let me also further clarify, Gary, before you go to 8, you can't just jump from 2 to 8 or 4 to 8 or whatever it is. You need to make a sequential update uh, from each major release until you're on the latest version of 8, and then you're ready to make that update to Angular 9. Got it. And you might want to also get involved, you know, bring in some outside help on that if, if you've got some If you're issues. too far behind. If you're too far behind and, and you're kind of worried about maybe some deprecations or what is it going to kind of take to make all these updates, and you're, maybe you're already, you know, your team's already swamped with all the other features and everything else that they're trying to yep. get done. Yep. Uh, so that might be another opportunity to bring in some professionals to help you uh, kind of strategize around that. Uh, but it's really important that you go through each step and that you validate that your application runs on that on that version. So don't just assume, oh, we're on six, we'll just go seven, eight, uh, we're good, right? Go and make sure that when you, when you go to seven, uh, you want to run all your tests, make sure everything's passing, everything looks good. Uh, you may even want to kind of stop there for a minute you know, maybe make a deployment, wait a sprint, then go and kind of plan that out uh, so that way you can eventually get on to Angular 9. Um, so what does it look like? Um, how, do I, how do I do that? How do I make the move? Uh, so the, there's a great resource out there uh, that the Google team has created uh, for you. It's update.angular.io. And they've got a checklist for you and you just choose from what version you're moving from to what version you're moving to, and they'll take you through that and give you kind of that checklist oh, and great. just kind of yeah drive that for you so that way you know kind of exactly what, what it needs to be. Um, the other thing I like about the checklist is that helps me as a team lead to kind of plan out what is it gonna take? Because I can look at that checklist and I can kind of get gauge oh, you know, how much work is involved in this in, in, in terms of like planning out for my sprints and when I'm actually gonna make that update. So they've done a really good job with creating that resource for you. Very cool. Um, what else should I know? The other thing I would say is that when you actually do the update to Angular, from Angular 8 to Angular 9, this is, it is uh, underneath the hood, they have made a, a dramatic change. But one of the beauties about that, remember that backwards compatibility yeah. that we talked about, yeah. is that the actual update from Angular 8 to Angular 9 really is quite easy. Um, and I've done it for uh, clients and for applications. Mm -hmm. And I think most organizations can kind of expect this to be somewhere between like a one to a three point story, kind of depending on what they're doing uh, with Agile and Scrum. But it's usually going to take maybe a day to a few days for you know somebody that's kind of senior on your team to actually go through that update process. Okay. Um, the other thing that you need to know is, remember we talked about that template type checking mm -hmm. and all the improvements around mm -hmm. that? Uh, Angular also, they realize that maybe you don't want to go all in on this template type checking because you might realize, wow, we've got some problems here with the types in our, in our templates. And so 
they gave you an ability to kind of go into uh, a particular file in the application and to configure different modes. And so there's a basic mode, a full mode, and a strict mode. And you might want to start out with just basic and kind of see what, see how things go. It's great foresight. Yep. And then, uh, again, as a team lead and kind of as an engineering manager, you can uh, have one of your guys kind of create a branch in your code and enable those different modes and try a build and kind of see, oh, how many problems are, do we have? And this is, when I say problems, like this is a good thing, right? We're mm -hmm. catching these bugs ahead of time, right. so we're not shipping these into production. Right. Uh, and so then you can kind of ratchet things up, as you will, and go from basic to full to strict, uh, and then hopefully eventually get onto strict and stay there, so that way you know that there's no uh, type errors in your code base. Uh, and so they've given you this ability to kind of configure the compiler with these diff different modes. Uh, so that way, you don't have to go all in right up front. You can kind of plan that and 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 get your application to a really solid, stable state uh, over over time, and, yep. and plan that out in future sprints and and kind of get there as you can uh, kind of make it happen. So that that is great foresight, like great insight. Yeah. Um, yeah. Thanks for all of the information. Um, exciting release. A much anticipated release. It is a release. much anticipated release. It is very exciting. The Google team has been hard at work on this. Um, one of the other things that maybe we should talk about, Gary, is like, are we like, should we really go to Angular Nine? Like, is that a is that a good thing for my organization mm -hmm. to do? Um, and I want to just make this really clear uh, to people that are listening, and watching yeah. this video. Uh, Google is heavily invested in Angular. I mean, this is not just like a side project, right? right? Google has over 1,500 applications, either internal, that are just for like employees to use, as well as external applications. So that's 1,500 applications, that's a lot, right? But not only that, but Google, they have unit tests, and end tests and integration tests for all of those applications. Mm. Testing is mandatory, Google. Mm -hmm. They've got tens of thousands of tests that are running against all of these applications all within Google to validate and to ensure the quality of this release. That have billions of users using those applications. Absolutely. Yeah. So this is something that we can trust as organizations and enterprises. You know, our businesses might be built on some of this software, revenue generating applications, right? Yep. And it's important that those applications are stable and we know that we can trust that next major release of Angular. And so they've done their due diligence. And so we know that we can update from Angular 8 to Angular 9 and that they've gone and they've ensured that it passes all of these tests and that it is ready to go. So I, think it, I think it even further just um, validates or solidifies um, why so many enterprises are using Angular, and just even more of a peace of mind. It's a really good point. You know, yeah, even I more of a peace of mind how yeah. much is being invested yeah. in this platform, this technology, um, yeah. for the next you know years to come. Um, thank you for all the information about Absolutely. Angular 9 and the it was release. A pleasure. Uh, not only what's what we can expect, but but also some really good insight on how, how to get started. So, Brian, thanks again. Yeah. Um, for all of you who've taken time to watch this episode, we hope you've gotten some good insight and some value out of um, your time. Until next time.